This is a fight for freedom, old top! I'll do it. For America. Welcome to Red Eye. I'm Greg Gutfeld, or as I'm known at my gym as the guy who does donkey squats on a leather onesie. Let's go to TV's Andy Levy for a pregame report. Hey, Andy, happy Monday or Tuesday morning. What's coming up on tonight's show? Thanks, Greg. A conformer be cast out, America. Our top story tonight, did President Obama promise to do a cameo if there's an Entourage movie? The shocking story that will make you hug it out. Plus, America's favorite reality show is back. The latest from Occupy Wall Street coming up. And finally, the creator of Coney 2012 has a second hit video in his many weeks. But why does the Invisible Children co-founder suddenly have very visible genitalia? We'll investigate next. Thank you, Andy. You bet. No, I don't, Andy. No, I don't. You quit? What? You quit? No, I don't quit. Oh, okay. All right. Somebody's sleeping on the couch again tonight. Let's welcome our guests. Well, she's so steamy that old people often complain that it's not the heat, it's the Jedediah Bila. I'm here tonight with columnist Jedediah Bila. Her latest book is called Outnumbered. There she's on the cover, looking serious. Well, he's so bright, he belches fireflies. I'd like to welcome a first-time <laughs> guest. He's Fox Business Network anchor Den Dennis Neal. Silent K there. He's suffering from March Madness, but that's probably that from the syphilis. It's my repulsive sidekick, Bill Schultz. And his latest tour is sponsored by the National Wallet Chain Association <laughs> in conjunction with the Hot Topic Acid Wash Skinny Jean Consortium. Sitting right nice. next to me is writer and comedian Jesse Joyce. His latest comedy CD is called Pro Joyce. And you'd rather bleed him than read him. It's our New York Times correspondent. Good to see you again, Pinch. According to some trifle called Comscore, the paper of record has lost its top spot as the world's biggest newspaper website. To Britain's The Daily Mail. Now, I don't really know what a website is, but I will say this. In a vernacular that this British rag can understand, these numbers are balderdash, poppycock, and bollocks, mate. A pox on both your house and your sunburned skin. Wanker. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. Well, that's what they say. All right. Then. Is BHO the ultimate bro? Well, like most people from Kenya, I mean Harvard, our nation's 44th president was a huge fan of Entourage, even scheduling Sunday night conference calls around the awful, awful show during his 2008 campaign. Mercifully, uh, Entourage ended in 2011. They'd look alike there, but there's been a lot of speculation over a possible film feature based on this repulsive series. And now the show's star, Adrian Grenier, a.k.a. Face, says that if the rumored movie gets made, the commander-in-chief will make an appearance that's brief. Yes, on Friday, the actor posted a picture, not seen here, of himself with the president on his Facebook wall, <laughs> writing under it, quote, I promise to make the Entourage movie if he would do a cameo. He agreed. Seriously. Meanwhile, Grenier is starring in a new movie, a tender story about a dog and a slide. I believe we have a clip. All right, Tom, would you like to play on the slide? Yes? Yeah, come on then. All right, come here. Tommy, go on then. Go on then. Go on then. Down you come. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. <laughs> They're just like hairy babies. <laughs> it's a good point. Yes, it is a good point. In fact, point. it's the best point you've made all year. I'm a, glad I came up with it on my own. <laughs> Jesse, how disgusting is it that we have a president wanting to be on this awful, awful show? It's like finding out he might be a secret Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, see, I'm surprised. I, I didn't realize you hated the show. I figured you would be more upset that he was, like, taking time from conference calls. Like, look at this guy. He's not showing up for meetings on time. You know, I figured that, that was going to be your angle. And then I was going to have to point out that President Bush was late for absolutely every budget meeting because he was uh, being dragged away watching the microwave. <laughs> You were playing off you were playing off the fact that he can't tell the difference between a microwave and a TV. <laughs> no, no, that's no, very original. Like, he was like, wait for it, it's gonna ding. Like, oh, I mean, like that's <laughs> funny to him. <laughs> all right. All right, definitely. He's one of the, the world's microwave. greatest presidents. So I'll forgive you that. Dennis, welcome to the program. You're uh, the much. business guy here tonight. Yeah. Could this promised cameo by the president be even worse than Obamacare? If that's indeed possible, <laughs> because Obamacare is the worst thing that ever 
was. Well, I mean, it, obviously this is a trifling topic, but there's a couple <laughs> reasons that make it interesting. First of all, why is it that Hollywood is so incredibly liberal and clearly loves the Democrats and Obama, even though they make far more money than most Americans and they get taxed and they're going to be taxed even more mm -hmm. if Obama's plans uh, go through? And the other thing is, why isn't the president able to operate a DVR? They had to schedule meetings around entourage <laughs> instead of just being able to kind of, oh, I'll take He's that and come back to it. I, I, I thought he was supposed to be so up. smart. Yeah, but you know what the thing is? The DVR takes a lot of excitement out of watching the show when it's first run. I, a lot of our fans will watch Red Eye live because it's so exciting to know that it's happening in real time rather than DVRing it the next or, morning. Or, or because yeah. they're alcoholics. Yeah, they don't want to be a many of them. Hothead, yeah. sir. Yeah. Don't be yeah. smirch on One of the best ways to watch Red Eye is not to DVR at all, but have people repeat the show via oral legend, which I find most <laughs> Jed Jedediah, uh, great to see you. Nice great dress. Will this just be another one of Obama's broken promises? He'll say that he's doing this, but then he won't because he's a legacy of broken promises. You know what? I'm going to shock you here, and yeah. I'm going to tell you I think it's kind of cool. I know I just said something good about Obama, thunder, lightning, something that you know crazy needs to happen. I think it's kind of cool. I think that I'd love to see GOP candidates do something like this. I think this is the way you get through to the pop culture and you excite kids, and I think it's kind of cool that he's doing something like this, to well, be honest. As you know, and I'm he could win an Emmy, and how cool would that be if the president won an Emmy? Well, it's in the movie, so it would be well, an Oscar. Or and something. Yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm all for exciting kids, but not in this manner. Bill, you've done a lot of accidental cameos when they film TV shows near the overpass where you sleep. For sure. Uh, please answer any question you feel <laughs> capable of. I do have a question. Is this oral legend that we're talking about a porn version of a bad Tom Cruise movie? Secondly, uh, I don't believe any of this. I think that Adrian Grenet is now cursed to only play Adrian Grenet now that he's actually been in Entourage. Mm -hmm. The guy needs work. The Entourage movie is the only thing happening. He probably got a picture with Obama at some sort of stupid celebrity eco thing. Yeah. And fake this thing on his Facebook for one reason and one reason only. Adrian needs to get laid. And he's probably, it's taken him a while. So That's true. He no longer has on, he, Exactly. Not, his you know, come online is, I'm the guy from Entourage, is now, I'm the guy that used to be on Entourage. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, uh, Jesse, this comes from a long line of uh, presidents who have made cameos. You had Zachary right. Taylor. Did a cameo in Golden Girls. He played Rue McClanahan's <laughs> love interest. Yes. Chester That's Arthur a did a great turn in Dobie Gillis as his creepy uncle. That's and then James Polk uh, played Artemis Gordon's younger brother in Wild Wild West. That's an excellent point. You're yes. absolutely right. So, yeah. Uh, and one time I walked into a Best Buy and I opened up a microwave and Bush was staring, <laughs> sitting inside, it, like spinning around a little thing. Like this is amazing. Right? Uh, this guy, it's a joke you could return to. Uh, well, I just, I feel like I fixed it. A yeah, yeah, you I, did. You know, this, the whole you know, show. This, yeah. this could set off further culture wars. The fact yeah. is, Entourage is a program that celebrates a lifestyle in which, you know, you want to go out and have sex at any cost. You're, mm. you know, smoking doobies out yeah. there having a great time. And should a president actually bring the office of the presidency into that kind of a... <laughs> that is a fair... Well, a yeah, I'll tell you something. I, I would watch Entourage the if they started referring to pot as smoking doobies. <laughs> <laughs> if they started saying that in L.A., I would watch the crap out of that show. It would be great if he didn't play the president. If he was just like a hot dog vendor. You know, like that was his cameo, you know? And then the rest of like the next scene would be like... Like, isn't it crazy how much that hot dog vendor looked like President Obama? And like, by the way, it'd be a, one job he's actually qualified right for. Yes. I'm sensitive I'm trying to tonight. You're leaving, out, you're leaving out one added bonus. All right, yes. you're giving me the bait here. Yeah. You're leaving out one added bonus. More time for acting, less time to destroy the country. Oh, yeah. there you go. Wow, this was certainly a fair and balanced look. <laughs> by, the way, <laughs> by the way, just really quickly, hot dogs, Bush's favorite thing to watch explode the <laughs> See I hope that's mean? not your last ad. Yes. I want to uh, explore I, this further. I want you to continue this <laughs> through the whole show. Um, I had more stuff to say, but I think we're enough. we've had enough here from movies to movements. <laughs> Well, it's spring training for complaining. Yep, Occupy Wall Street is back, and it's backier than ever. <laughs> On Saturday, a few hundred protesters sprung up like fetid flowers in lower Manhattan to mark the sixth anniversary of the anti-capitalist crusade, with some marching through the streets chanting, Bankers are gangsters. That doesn't even rhyme. And also cursing at <laughs> cops. By Sunday morning, the police have made 73 arrests, most during a late-night raid in uh, uh, Zuccotti Park. In other words, the whole thing worked says an OWS or press rep, quote, 
Every time they use violence to put us down, violence to put us down, it only increases the number of people that are empathetic to the cause. Mayor Bloomberg did us a big help last night in terms of fundraising. You can't win for losing people. Meanwhile, police are trying to track down a Twitter user named Smackama One, who wrote after the protest, "Quote: We won't make a difference if we don't kill a cop or two." The brave anonymous dude behind that tweet tells the Daily News it was just a joke, saying, "It's not like I meant anything of it. Who takes anything like that seriously? I'm in Florida. What am I going to do?" <laughs> I use that excuse all the time when I'm in Florida. Anyway, uh, you know who takes a clean desktop seriously? The don't put it here cat. He wants his space protected. He does. He does. In a way, he's. It's like the pen is a metaphor for our own borders. That's right. Jedediah, does this movement follow the weather report closer than any other in history? Because you only hear from them when it's nice outside, or when it's, or when it's a holiday when you yeah. can't distinguish between drunk people and the Occupy protesters. That's true. <laughs> One of those two cases. Yeah, it's true. St. Patrick's Day. Uh, bad right. choice. Yeah, you know what? I mean, as an Irish American, the only thing that I hate more than Yahoo's getting drunk and publicly urinating are hippies getting drunk and publicly urinating <laughs> yes. dressed like leprechauns. Like, uh, because, you know, by the way, you know what happens if you uh, put uh, dreadlocks on a leprechaun? You know what, what you get? Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with a little voice. I was just Terrible. hoping that like one of those dudes dressed like a leprechaun as he was being taken away from marijuana possession was like, they're always after me, pot of pot. <laughs> you know? See what I did there? You know, it's funny that I'm surprised you don't like accent, them because too. you've got you've got street theater troops and guitar playing sing-along. That's exactly a typical Friday night for you up at the Moon Tower. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, thanks for dressing like an Easter basket tonight. Um, <laughs> No, uh, look. I, <laughs> no, let it see. Hurtful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if only they took a camera shot of me salting. It would have <laughs> oh, been yeah, funny. Oh, yeah, they didn't do that at yeah, all. They, they didn't. No, they were pouting. Yeah, yeah, they can all, get it in post. Yeah, they'll all. put it in post. Uh, Dennis, <laughs> is it a bad sign when a movement says it has to thrive on scraps from police and getting arrested? Well, I, I think that it was a very revealing statement when they said it, it, it helps us with fundraising. And that's part of what OWS has become about is fundraising. And it raises a lot of money from unions. And it raises a lot of money from people who are sympathetic. The, pro the problem with OWS is it really is a movement driven by envy and self-entitlement. And it's a bunch of people, you know, in America, we always try to, I'm sorry to be serious, but we try to guarantee equal opportunity and we need to work on that. Mm -hmm. But they want no, the we guarantee don't. of equal outcome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They want yeah. everybody to be yeah. equal, but the Gini index will show you that in countries with the most even pay across the entire society, mm -hmm. they have the worst economies, the worst growth in countries with a huge gap between rich and poor. They have more job growth. They have uh, basically more things to help the poor. Oh, yeah. I agree with everything you said, but don't come out against the gap. They do a lot of good things <laughs> yes, everywhere. That's, that's where Bill shops. I hate the chinos. Bill, <laughs> Bill, bad experience. The, this guy, pants. the guy, this anonymous guy, I think they're, they're saying his name is Rusty Braxton. Could he have been a ringer? <laughs> I know. With a name like Rusty, I'm not sure he could be a left winger anymore. Well, also, he's in Florida. The only Democrats there are in certain areas of South Beach, and I don't think they have computers. <laughs> Secondly, I would also say that this guy described himself as an armchair quarterback that he's never actually participated in anything on Occupy Wall Street, and he's just sort of been observing it from his enclave in Florida. Let's remember that armchair quarterback refers to people watching the NFL and chastising the quarterback as he does stuff that the armchair quarterback couldn't do. It doesn't have anything to do with threatening to kill a police officer. But he did Let's say use it. that uh, but he did word say well. I, yeah, and I love how this guy thought that he was going to say that and just get away with it. Like, no one was going to investigate it, that you yeah. can just say on the internet, yeah, I'm going to kill a police officer, or I think it's a good idea to kill a police officer. Sir, no people aren't accustomed to what Twitter really empowers them and the vile yeah. nature of it. You know, within two generations of forwarding, it reaches half a million people. And regular people reach half a million people, and they're going to mess up. That's actually a very, very, very good point that most people don't know what they're doing. They just think they're sending an email to friends. I mean, we see celebrities <laughs> but it's a all the time. It's a public like, email. Like, yeah. It's right. right. Yeah. Well, well, look, all the domestic terrorism and uh, cyber threats aside, I want this guy to be sentenced for 25 years for being utterly humorless. Yeah. Like he, like you, you say, like I uh, uh, kill a cop, and you call that a joke. You have the audacity <laughs> to call that a joke without even attempting a punchline. Yeah. Like uh, if you kill a cop on St. Patrick's Day, at least it won't be hard to book a bagpipe. But band, you know what? Right? It, Look, I'm gonna say it's despicable. Despicable. Guys.
let's remember, there's this First Amendment out there yeah. that is supposed to protect all but the very worst of speech. And if the cops do go after this guy, and we realize that he's in Florida, like he says, and he didn't mean it at all, they are going after his free speech right to mm -hmm. say inappropriate things. Well, but that's a threat. That would be that would be deemed as a threat. I think you would have the responsibility to investigate that. I mean, if you you can't just say anything. You can't. You can't. Especially, actually, yes, you, you can can't get say away with anything. anything. That's the you idea. Can, of but you a don't get away with it all the time. But if you make a threat, it's you have it has to be investigated. Then the person mm -hmm. should be. My feeling is the person should always be billed for the investigation. <laughs> yeah. It's like if it, it costs. That's actually, you not brought a bad it on idea. yourself. Well, then you could <laughs> government could abuse that and go after you on purpose to silence you because you don't want to be billed for. There's, a, there's another element here, though, that we're not looking at. Has our outrage addiction gotten so bad that we've turned one anonymous Yahoo, who's not a public figure, right. who did one tweet into front into page news? Story. That in of itself is pretty surprising. Well, wait a minute. It's not front page news. It was on page six in the Daily News, and it's red eye. Everyone knows. <laughs> everyone knows that page six in Daily News is page one everywhere else. Yeah. That's where the real scoops are. Well, no, but to, to make a kind of a serious point about, about freedom of speech is is that satire is always protected under freedom of speech mm -hmm. yeah. but this douche clown is like <laughs> hiding under the I was joking but yeah. you're not funny like there's no <laughs> joke that's yeah. what like I can do like I can say fire in a crowded theater which is the defining line yeah. as to what that's like where they draw the line the yeah. Supreme Court as like what freedom where freedom of speech ends I can get away with it yeah. because I can find a way to make it satire and yeah. make it funny yeah this guy is not being funny. You Hard can't to be just funny, though. Backdoor it into like, I was a joke. Yeah. You I mean, know, I used to, characters. I've been inclined to believe Twitter, it, but funny. I keep thinking about bushes and microwaves. And I'm starting to have you retract this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. <laughs> we uh, all agree that the charges should be that he insulted comedy, if anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, right? And I think we can all agree that. That's a stupid shirt. Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> well, you said that about his. No, no, by the way, I'm offended by that observation because I look like an Easter basket as well, sir. I'm not. I'm, I'm not chopped Easter kind of liver. Here. And, and by the way, you look like you just guest starred in Miami Vice St. Patrick's Day edition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It took me a while, but I got there. Coming up, can you wear too many sweatshirts? Jesse Joyce discusses his new book. My sweatshirt has a sweatshirt. It's 952 pages wow. long. But first. <laughs> Hey, look, it's hot chicks. I sure like to go shopping with them. I mean, wait, they're awesome to look at. She's graced many covers in just blue Barack's cover, that is. Yep, Elle McPherson has outed Obama as a socialist. During an interview with Howard Stern, the model turned Marxist, says she supports the president because of his socialist tendencies. Check it out, check it outers. Who should be the next president of the United States, Al McPherson? I think Obama's going to do it. You like Obama? Yeah, I'm living in, in London and I'm a socialist. What do you expect? Hmm. Obama is yet to deny the catwalkers commie comment, which is exactly what a secret commie would do. All this raises the question, do Great Danes make great beds? <laughs> Dead dead. I'm sorry, but I can't condone that kind of behavior. <laughs> What's next? Inappropriate. It's a, yeah, the two different uh, types of dog breeds. Uh, it could go a Saint really Jordan dark. Had a speech on it. I know. Yeah. It could go in a very dark and <laughs> ugly direction. Jesse, uh, did Ella McPherson just confirm what everybody knew that Obama is a socialist? And isn't it fantastic that finally a fashion model of her stature has come out and said so? Look, if you're gonna if you're gonna suddenly take when do we start taking Elle McPherson's thoughts seriously? Like, if you're going to do that, then you have to accept them all. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that she also said, I've never read anything unless I've written it. Uh, and then she also said, I believe men and women are different. Therefore, the concept of equal rights doesn't really sit with me. <laughs> I like her now. Good point, Elle. Oh, what are your thoughts on the complexity of the electoral process? Yeah, but you know what? I, I have to say, uh, two out of three ain't bad. Uh, Dennis, here's the thing. Uh, do you, does anybody really care 
when a super, like a supermodel doesn't have to worry about her thoughts because even a dictator will go, oh, she's a supermodel, I'll let her in. So socialism, fascism well, doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, no matter what she says, I imagine a lot of people are going to forgive her because, well, she's a supermodel. Yeah. But can you even be a multi-million dollar supermodel and be a socialist? I, I really yeah. don't think you can. Well, she will when she gets older and finds that she has to start selling things. It's kind of antithetical things. to building wealth, though. Yeah. And she's built yeah. a, a great amount of wealth. But she's never actually worked. Everything comes from the way she looks. The moment she has to work, when she's on like that uh, sh- home shopping network selling like bizarro jewelry, then she'll become a capitalist. <laughs> yeah. That's what always happens, Jedediah. Um, do you think she was? it was just a joke? She was making light of critics who uh, say that Obama's a socialist? Oh, no. I think she's serious. I think she just doesn't know what the word socialist means. That's the problem. Yeah. I did a little research on Elle McPherson, and I found that she's worth $45 million, and not just for being a supermodel. She owns a production company. She launched a fitness line of clothing and workout videos, a line of lingerie, maternity wear line. Bill, you Socialist did this. Socialist mm-hmm. my tushy. This woman is a capitalist. Mm-hmm. She has made a ton of money off the system. She needs to look up socialist in the dictionary. It would be her biggest enemy. She would be nowhere if she was a socialist. I mean, one fun we thing about this well, is you know the Obama people are just cringing that she's done this, because it would be cool to be associated with her. And then she uses the, the right. S word. It's, it's like so when he took Cameron of the yes. UK to the to the uh, basketball game, and Cameron said in an interview, I, I, "I'm surprised the game is so fast and furious." And you know, Obama was like, oh. "No, not fast and furious." <laughs> That's um, good. Next day on that. I gotta say though, I think Republicans need to look up socialists because of the last seven presidents, the top three biggest spenders were Republicans. So mm-hmm. if Obama is a socialist, then what is Reagan? Call Marx. Oh, no. secondly, he didn't redistribute the That's wealth or want to. Secondly. If Elle McPherson is as vacant and vapid as we claim she is, isn't the opposite of what she said probably true? And that Obama is nothing but a centrist who calls himself a Democrat. Oh, yes, he's a centrist. I've never heard of medicine. put a T in the word secondly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and thirdly... (laughs) No more more points. I have one more point. Uh, Elle has something that I like to call fleavage, and that is freckles in between the cleavage. Once you notice it and look at it, you can't look away, and I think that proves something. I'm straight. Yeah, that... (laughs) But uh, no, a a model claiming she's a socialist is like a panda claiming that he belongs to the Knights of Columbus. Uh, It has no effect on your actual life because you live beyond the rules. You don't. A panda doesn't have to go to the meetings. Yeah. Pandas are pretty lazy. They do a lot. They are. They like it you. Does you, have an effect though, in a way, because young girls listen to that and they think socialist means something good. No, I'll it tell you. Doesn't mean something good. Well, no, it means young, zero prosperity. It means no money. It means Elle McPherson yeah. doesn't become Elle okay. McPherson. Well, two points. Young girls don't listen to anything except their iPods. That's nope. not true. Oh, it, it, well, maybe well, it's not. Sexism. Yes. I'm crying. It, sexism. It, the, the other thing is, it's about being cool versus not cool. It's yeah. just cool to say socialism. That's why everybody who's an undergrad says always yeah. talks about. About socialism Academia. carries around their, uh, you know, their Noam Chomsky book. You know what yeah. is cool? What? Fleavage. Girls go out there and get some sun. <laughs> All right. No sunblock. All right. On that note, do you have a comment on the show? Email us. It's redeyefoxnews.com. And to leave a voicemail on my direct line, 212-462-5050. Still to come, the halftime report from TV's Andy Levy. He has cleavage uh. and fleavage. Ooh. Tonight's Hamptrum Report is sponsored by Cherry Blossoms, the flower of the Japanese cherry tree often cultivated for ornamental use. Thanks, Cherry Blossoms. Welcome back. Let's find out if we've got anything wrong so far. For that, we go to TV's Andy Levy. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Hey, how are you, Greg? I'm doing all right, but thanks. Good. How's your St. Patty's Day? Uh, uneventful, actually. Do you walk around with your pot of gold as usual? Well, that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I have a problem. I know. I know. Sometimes I can't no, get to the bathroom. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Uh, President Obama says he'll do a cameo in an Entourage movie. Uh, first of all, Jesse, of course, nice job getting your anti-Bush joke in there, even though Greg didn't go anywhere near where you thought he was going. I know. I, <laughs> Yeah. I, I even called back to it successfully yeah, several I know times. You I, know, I, know. I know. You're a pro. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, you said, obviously, this is a trifling topic. Uh, first of all, you take that back, sir. This is our lead. Withdraw on your honor. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Uh, also, there's nothing trifling about entourage. It's it's depth of depravity and disgustingness, which is a word I think I probably just made up, mm-hmm. are unplumbed. Indeed you did. And, but entourage is wonderful. It's kind of a boy fantasy thing, which is why it worked well as television. It was an awful show. 
Why do you, you guys think it's awful? I don't get that. I think Entourage really? was a lot of fun, and all of us kind of wish we could be that guy. Not you know? me. I was that you guy. You were that guy. Yeah. That's why you don't wish it. It's escapism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thanks, nerd, Bill. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> no, you know, you're Greg, you would, you would never, just because people called you turtle in high school doesn't mean you were that kind of. You know, the, you know what the problem is, too, with Entourage? If a song showed up on Entourage, you could never listen to it again because it would be linked to them walking around. You'd hear that song. It'd be a great song. And you would mind to go, ah, oh, now they, they, they pooed on a really great song. Yeah. I mean, we, obviously, we could talk about this all night, as, Greg, you and I often do. Yes. Uh, but... The first couple seasons, it was a pretty good show, and then it was just unnecessary. Yeah, yeah it jumps the shark. It was yeah. terrible. Uh, Jedediah, it jumped the turtle. Jedediah, you said that you think that it's kind of cool that Obama was doing that. Yeah. Uh, again, nothing, nothing cool about Antara. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it just would be nice if one of the GOP candidates did something like that that the young people could say, "Wow, that's cool." Yeah. He's, you know, just something cool. Give me I think, something. I think Romney, give me something. I think Romney did uh, hee haw back in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it Santorum? Was he on Sex and the City for a while? Yeah, he was. Oh yes. He, he, remember the guy that was dating uh, Carrie? Carrie, yeah, and he had issues. Yeah. Yeah. And then that thing happened, and yeah. then he oh, yeah. left a post-it note <laughs> yeah. on the fridge yes. saying, "I gotta go." Yes. Perfect that was show. Santorum. Yeah. Perfect yeah. show for Santorum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill, you said you don't believe any of this, that Adrian Grenier had his picture taken with Obama at some uh, eco-fundraiser that made the whole thing up. I'll go a step further. I think the picture may have been of Grenier and a wax figure of the president. <laughs> See, he's got a lot of spare time on his hands yep. right now. Absolutely. Wax museums are something he can put in his schedule. Yep. I will say, I don't think this is going to happen, and here's why, at least, well, at least while he's in office. If there's an entourage movie, it's going to be rated R. There's going to be nudity, sex in it. No, no president's going to get involved with that. Oh, they've got to do a PG. It would be great to do a P. I would go see a PG version of Entourage just to see how horrible it could possibly be. Yeah. Perfect example of this, Hanover 2. Remember that? Mm. Even Bill Clinton said no at the last minute about doing yeah. a cameo on exactly. that movie. Yep. Even Bill well, Clinton. And that, and that movie was tame compared to Bill Clinton's real life. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. George <laughs> W. did do a cameo in the second Kumar movie. Oh, really? Smoking <laughs> a doobie. Uh, he was smoking a doobie. He was doing some damage. <laughs> and looking at microwaves. Uh, Could beat me too. <laughs> I was going to do something. Yeah. You know I was. I know. Yeah, because that joke is too priceless to just drop. <laughs> <laughs> I, suggest you, I suggest you work it into your performance at Hilarities in, in Cleveland. Hey, thanks for bringing that up. I will be there oh, this week. Now I don't have to waste my time in postgame. Uh, you better. Hilarities. Uh, it's in Cleveland. Yeah. You uh, can't uh, spell uh, Cleveland uh, without leave. Moving on, Greg. <laughs> uh, Occupy Wall Street. Greg, you said on Saturday a few hundred protesters sprung up. Uh, I believe you meant spraying, which is a past tense. Of spring, sprung is of course the past part of something. Oh, oh. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I kind of stand corrected. Mm -hmm. Lean. Uh, yeah, Dennis you you, stood. Dennis, <laughs> exactly. Dennis, you thought it was a revealing statement when the OWS guy said that all of the arrests, all of the arrests, quote, did a big help last night in terms of fundraising. Right. But to be fair, the rest of the guy's quote was, uh, quote, but it's not just about the financial aspects. It's not about people writing checks, although they will. It's right. about People standing up but, and counting. But who wants to be fair? I didn't really think that was the no, object at all uh, it's, it's on this my, show. It's especially. my object, sir. It is my <laughs> always my object, sir. Yeah. Well, you are going to add that second part. But I think it was better to cut it out. No. Now, Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Yeah. All right. <laughs> or an okay story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Jesse, I don't, I, I'm, I could be wrong here. I don't believe that this guy, Rusty Braxton, ever said he was trying to be funny when he, when he tweeted that thing about killing a cop or two. He claimed he was taken out of context that what he meant was that, quote, for the U.S. to have the kind of revolutions they have overseas, we'd have to do that. But he wasn't, he claims he wasn't actually advocating it. But I don't, did he claim he was? Yeah, he definitely said it was a joke. That's what he said. He but said I, don't think, I, don't I was think making he meant, a joke. You know, uh, ha, ha. Go ahead. Do you have it there? I don't. Uh, oh, okay. I thought I did. I, well, I, you're I, don't, I don't think he meant in a ha ha <laughs> joke kind of way. I think he meant in a he didn't mean it kind of way. Mm. It doesn't matter. It's not a joke. I agree. There's a definition of joke. That's not. It's not a joke. All right. Uh, By the way, why does your cat hate having pens on the desk so much? <laughs> I don't get that. Because <laughs> you have a lot of cats. There was a video of a cat shoving things. Oh, I forget. You leave. <laughs> you, don't pay attention to show. you got anything about Bush in a microwave? <laughs> I'll get to it. See, it's, it's expected now. I'm going to surprise you with it later. Well, all right. 
Uh, Elle McPherson says she supports Obama because she's a socialist. Jedediah, you said McPherson's net worth is $45 million. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, various sources list her net worth at between 45 and $60 million. Personally, I hope it's closer to 60 because otherwise I worry. Mm. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so she's doing better than we think. That yeah. socialist. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, by the way, Kathy Ireland is apparently the richest supermodel with a net worth of $350 million bucks. Yes. And you know why? Because A, she's a capitalist, and B, she does those home shopping network yes. things. Yeah. Yes. And, fle and fleavage. Oh, and Andy, yes. I want to add yes. something. <laughs> Please. Um, I'm sure the, the, the Karl Marx Reagan thing was a line used in that study about Reagan and Democrat things from the writer of Newsweek whose name escapes me, and I apologize for reading Newsweek. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Bill, you did say you said that if L is as empty-headed as we're saying, isn't it possible that the opposite of what she says is true, and that Obama is a centrist? I don't think centrist is the opposite of socialist. Yeah, no. no, I didn't say it was. I'm just saying that yes, he is yes, not you what. Did. Yes, you did. No, I said what she said. The opposite is true, so that he is not a socialist. No, you said that so that explores he's a, you a said, whole. No, you said so that he's a centrist. I said what he is, not exactly what she was saying. No, which no. Was the, we'll, we'll it doesn't the matter. He let we'll off the entire the point with secondly. We'll check the tape on that. <laughs> I stand by secondly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jesse, last chance. Any uh, microwave jokes? No, you can't force me into a callback. It's not how callbacks work. All right. I, I, don't, I don't think you know how callbacks work, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you sure, Jess? Yeah. Just, give me. Give, right. I, I'll, I'll sense the timing. President Bush, he put something in a microwave. A dead horse in the <laughs> microwave, apparently. You got, you got nothing? You got nothing? It's not that I don't have anything, Andy. The timing is bad. Oh. Oh. Okay. Story oh, wow. of my life. I know what I'm doing. Well, you know, if you ever ask uh, President Bush to do something, he'd just do it. He wouldn't say the timing is bad. <laughs> I think we learned a lesson here. President Bush, uh, Jesse Joyce. Uh. <laughs> Be careful with those. Yeah. 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 All right, coming up, John Hamm discusses the new season of Mad Men. Not here, but on some other show. Coming up is their new close-up video of Coney 2012 creator's epic meltdown. Thankfully, yes. How will his work be viewed now that we've seen him nude? Well, well, last week, Jason Russell, creator of the crazy viral video Coney 2012, was detained in San Diego for stripping naked, interfering with traffic, and possibly masturbating in public. His film, aimed at bringing the Ugandan warlords to justice, was uh, spread by celebrities like Oprah, Ryan Seacrest, Lady Gaga, and of course Harvey Korman, and has been viewed by more than 80 million uh, views on YouTube. <laughs> But now, video of Russell's meltdown obtained by TMZ is setting the internet on fire. Oh my God. What? F*** that f***. There's f***. F*** you the devil. F*** you. Right, right What is wrong with that? I do that every morning in the park. But I do it at a time when nobody's up. Right. Anyway, Russell's wife is blaming the outburst on critics of the film who have said it manipulates the facts and oversimplifies the issue. And his family released a statement saying, quote, let us say up front that Jason has never had a substance abuse or drinking problem. And, uh, well, maybe that isn't a problem. And this episode wasn't caused by either of those things. Instead, they claimed it was, of course... Extreme exhaustion and dehydration. Did you just call it E E E D. Mm -hmm. That caused him to freak the F out. Oh, yeah, exhaustion. People say Russell won't be charged and said he was taken to a hospital and placed on something called a 5150, which is also my least favorite Van Halen album. Terrible. So let's discuss this, shall we, in the <laughs> lightning round. Lightning round. Jedi, I was away on vacation in Florida, actually, when this whole uh, Coney mm -hmm. thing hit, so I have no idea what it's about, and frankly, mm -hmm. I've uh, already kind of lost interest. <laughs> but uh, what is this? When the guy behind the message has a total naked meltdown, yeah. does this help or hurt it? I would. I think it's safe to say it discredits <laughs> some of what was happening. Really? Should yeah, it? I, well, I think it does. Whether I don't know if it should. I mean, he, the problem is they said he was exhausted and dehydrated. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm exhausted and dehydrated, I get some water, I take a nap, I, I don't do this. So I think people might think there's something else going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe if only. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Though. Yeah. You got arrested for being, or you got hospitalized for being dehydrated 
masturbated and for uh, an extreme exhaustion, exhaustion, that's a guy who knows how to masturbate. But imagine, <laughs> then why don't we see thousands of people doing this after the New York Marathon? Yeah, that's an right. excellent question. Yes. That's an excellent question. So, Bill, Bill you, what he did looks like a typical Tuesday for you. So what was going on? Also, what did he do? I think we're missing the point of this. If you watch the video and you listen to all the stuff he was yelling and the inflections and the whole thing, I think the most shocking part about this, this story is not what he did, but the fact that he has a wife. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was what really surprised me. He, he's, I heard him refer to her as his friend, and that, to me, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dennis, yes. you're, a, you're a medical doctor. Yeah. Uh, diagnosis for us. <laughs> you know, I'll be very surprised if indeed it, it's proved through toxicology tests and everything that drugs or alcohol or something wasn't playing a big role in that. It is something that so many people do take substances to try to have an experience exactly like he is said to have had without <laughs> drugs at all. I mean, something's going on there. But you, maybe it's just fear of success. I, one thing I want to see is which will now get more downloads, his naked video or the Coney 2012 video that well, brought him to fame? Who was it? Uh, the comedian, female comedian, can't think of her name, said it's not, uh, it's, it, kudos to him to getting two viral videos. In <laughs> oh, I don't remember her name. Oh, well, I don't like it. your guys generalizing what is a disease afflicting many Americans. I, for one, have, from day one, been working against uh, exhaustion awareness. I wear a bow for it. It's not currently on my person where you can see it. <laughs> I, I just I think this is an extension of his uh, artistic vision, right? He's yeah. trying to raise awareness yeah. for invisible child soldiers, yeah. and does so by uh, discharging millions of invisible children <laughs> in mailboxes and he's, on public uh, park benches. He, you are a weirdo, and uh, he is the. I think he's the real hero. I, I think, think perhaps this will taint his image. Uh, I'm going to taint your shirt. <laughs> it's, I think exhaustion is a, is an epidemic. It is. It is an epidemic. It is. It's yeah, it's a disease. But I'm telling you, the only time people do this is after doing drugs. You don't, you unless you're, um, what do you call it, uh, you're, you're mentally ill, but this guy I, wasn't. I play patty cake with the street all the time. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. You know what, Greg, you say that, but as you remember, Lizzie Lohan suffered from exhaustion many times. No drugs were involved. Also, also <laughs> an, another person with cleavage. That's yeah, two girls yeah. that we've right. mentioned. Next topic, a California TV weatherman, is there really any other kind, is suing CBS, a <laughs> network, for sex and age discrimination, claiming his job applications were ignored because he wasn't an attractive young woman. This has happened to me a lot. Mm. Kyle Hunter, seen here, oh, he Ooh. is delicious, looking rather sassy, is seeking unspecified Bowie. damages after he says he was passed over for uh, jobs at two CBS stations for women with no qualifications, despite his years of experience. Looks a lot like David Bowie. A spokesman for CBS says, quote, the complaint is frivolous and based on misstatements of facts. Dennis, uh, Gloria Allred is his lawyer. Uh, does that make you dislike him more or like him a lot more? You know, my number one goal is just to make sure I say nothing on this show that could wreck my career because you guys are really crazy here. You don't say anything. So let me just say, yeah, it makes me dislike him more that she is his lawyer. That lawyer has an amazing nose for going after, you know, news generating cases, even if the, she doesn't go after uh, terribly just causes sometimes. However, in this case. You know, I, I moved into television uh, only four years ago, and yeah. I have suffered the yeah. slings and arrows that he <laughs> speaks of. I have had people at another network with half my uh, experience go on because they had, you know, wonderful looks. Because they looked remotely human. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Rather than like a Muppet. <laughs> yeah. I kid him. That's Not true. you, Jesse. I don't kid you at all. You're a hideous, hideous human being. You were actually a weatherman in the early 80s. Can I you was. vouch for this man's concern? Well, look, here's the deal, right? I mean, look how, do you see how kind of like, he's really, yeah, he's kind of leathery looking these days, you know? I thought so, he was quite handsome. Look, when the TV kicks you off, you can always just go back into the microwave, like <laughs> he's been doing for so many. Like, look at him. He's like, this guy. Have you ever saw? Have you seen? By the way, his reel. Go to YouTube. Check out this dude's reel. Because yeah. he, when he delivers the weather, he like gyrate. He's like, what would happen if Kathy Lee Gifford had sex with an Elvis impersonator? It's like that's exactly. Which Who says she didn't? Video. Who really? says she didn't? I'm Wait a second, though. Like. I mean, am, are we looking at the same photo here? Because I'm looking at that photo, and I'm thinking he's one cycle away from being an attractive <laughs> woman. As a matter of fact, I think him, I've seen him as an attractive woman at Vince's Cabaret on Dollar Beer Nights every Saturday. Bill. Bill. <laughs> Allegedly. You are one to talk. The pot calling the kettle black. He's an attractive young man, Jedediah. I'm the pot calling the kettle um, gorgeous. The, the, the fact is, yes, he is gorgeous. The fact is, you get the same info from every 
be weathermen. So the only reason why you would watch weathermen is if they're good looking. Yeah, I mean, basically, they're all wrong 90% of the time. Oh. So, I mean, I think we can all say that we'd rather see someone attractive. Although, I think he's cute. Do so it's not like he's ugly or, or, or he... odd looking. By the way, or... uh, Fox News has some ex- excellent looking and very talented weathermen yeah. and weather girls. Rick Reichmuth, Whoa. can't go wrong with him. More like oh, sick Reichmuth. His body is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on that note. What? what, do you want to work in another microwave joke? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say, like, it's interesting that you say the word for uh, uh, reporting the weather on television like a Jewish last name. You say weatherman. <laughs> it's very weird. I'm glad we took time out of the rest of this show for you to <laughs> struggle. All right, Tyke. <laughs> I nailed that. You nailed that. <laughs> time, time to take a break, but when we come back, more wonderful stuff. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Oh, yeah, it's mail time. The address is red at foxnews.com. Send me something to read, and I will read it. And then the red eye robots will answer it because I don't have time for these shenanigans. Here we go. Somebody who didn't leave us a name leads things off. How much time does Gutfeld get off anyway? Lots of exclamation points because I'm weird. He was already on vacation the first week of January, and he's had so many days off in between. More explanation points. What a disgrace. First of all, why are you yelling? Do you need a robot hug? Just remember, it's not your fault. Second, if you're not getting enough Greg, feel free to visit him at his home, anytime. His address is 4432 Henry Street, apartment 18 F, New York, New York. P.S. He hides a key in the plant outside the door. P.P.S. He likes surprises. Hmm. Maybe so. All right, Kevin from Wisconsin. Is it Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Right. Uh, do you cats actually read all these? Is it still cool to refer to a person as a cat? Kevin, if by you cats, you mean actual cats, then yes. We have a staff of over 20 cats who read every single email that gets sent to us. We've trained them to use Bill Schultz as a scratching post and his desk as a toilet. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Guy could have worked out a little bit more. There yeah. is a robot without abs. It's like, what's tongue. the point of being yeah. a robot if you can't? I mean, if you're a robot, you can build your own body. Finally, Fred from Kansas writes, unbelievable. Andy said 57 was a prime number and nobody called him on it. You kids should all have been left behind. No, 57 is not a prime number because 57 is 19 times 3. Sheesh. <laughs> Fred, you know what number comes to mind? Zero. Because that's what you are. Robot zing. Anyway, math was never my strong suit, but I did once have an affair with a Texas Instruments calculator. Okay, I lied. It was a Casio. Mmm. I'd be ashamed of a Casio. Yeah. 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 All right. We're going to close these out with a... Thanks. Did I nail that for you? All right. At least I didn't use a microwave joke for the eighth time. Ooh, I made fun of George Bush. I'm an edgy comedian. (laughs) A room. Yeah, we'll close things out with a post-game wrap-up from TV's Andy Levy. And as he clips of recent shows, go to foxnews.com slash red on. Time to go back to TV's Andy Levy for whatever he does. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Jedediah, uh, how's the website going? It's going great, and I have some new stuff coming up from some of subscribers, so come to JedediahBeela.com, join up, and you will receive exclusive stuff. Excellent. Oh, goody. Hey, Dennis, what was the uh, deal with Apple's big announcement Monday morning? Yeah, they said so they go to all-time high because they're going to pay a dividend for one of the first times in their recent history. Everyone loves it, but here's why you ought to worry about it. Usually, you have to pay a dividend to people to pay them because your stock doesn't go up as much as it used to. Mm. Does Apple know something we don't know? Also, mm. your dividend gets paid. You pay taxes on it, so it's like getting taxed at almost a 50% rate when you receive a dividend. Here, I'm, nodding roughly. Like I under- I'm, I'm nodding like I understand. Okay. <laughs> this is Apple's full of crap. Uh, Jesse, you going to be telling some George Bush microwave jokes in Cleveland? Not, not those particularly, but I will no. be in Cleveland telling comedy jokes uh, this week, the 20th through the 25th. Hilarities. Go. Excellent. Hey, is a comedy joke different from a joke? I just I was set, stated it awkwardly to make it funnier. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, you accomplished your task. Thanks. Bye. Uh, all right. Thanks, Andy. Jedediah, Bill, Dennis, Jesse. Wonderful show. That does it for me. Your best friend, America's Bad Boy.